Bernard sat down for a nearly hour-long interview with Robert Costa of the Washington Post, and I thoroughly enjoyed this interview. Bernie Sanders was really at his best, and the entire thing was phenomenal. I'll link to it down below if you want to watch it, but I want to show you some highlights here and what I found to just be great because not only did he make some great points about the state of the 2020 race as well as what his presidency would look like, but he didn't hesitate to take some some, some pretty bold shots at the venue itself, uh, which I found the most entertaining. Thanks so much for being here. Is Bank of America really sponsoring this? I, well, let's okay. just get into the interview. <laughs> 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 the awkwardness that you can hear in um, the interviewer's voice, Robert Costa, it was palpable, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. <laughs> this is why I love Bernard. He's at his best when he's outspoken, when he doesn't hold back. You can tell when Bernie is pulling punches, but when he just, you know, is himself, it comes across as organic, and it's just... He shines, and he really shined throughout this entire interview. But I've got two more really short, um, less substantive clips here. So Bernie was asked about what Joe Biden said in the event he were the nominee and he went up against Donald Trump. And his response was that he would consider challenging Donald Trump to a push-up competition or something along those lines in the event Donald Trump questioned if Joe Biden was weak or something along those lines. Bernie's response here was perfect. Vice President Biden said in terms of fighting President Trump, beating President Trump on Morning Joe this morning, he, he may challenge the president to push-ups. I have no comment on that. <laughs> that was the best response ever. It was short but sweet, but effective. Because look, that level of stupidity, it really shouldn't be dignified with a thoughtful response. What Joe Biden is going to do if he becomes the nominee, which I hope he doesn't, but in the event he's the nominee, it's going to be a gigantic pissing contest between him and Donald Trump. Whereas if Bernie Sanders was the nominee, we know that it would be about the policy substance. Donald Trump would inevitably call him crazy Bernie, tweet about him, attack him, but Bernie Sanders would remain glued to the policy agenda, and that's how you win. So you can't really dignify these things that Joe Biden says because he also has this kind of, I'm a tough guy persona, which is just, it's insufferable to me. It's insufferable. Like, who does that play to? Does that really play to members of the Democratic Party? Is that gonna excite them to come out and vote for you? I think Joe Biden thinks so because he's a narcissist like Donald Trump and it's insufferable. So Bernie's response there was absolutely perfect. Um, but one last thing I want to uh, touch on here before we start getting into the policy details is a question about busing came up. The interviewer was trying to frame it as if Bernie Sanders made an anti-busing statement. So Bernie would be technically in the same camp as Joe Biden. Bernie Sanders shut that shit down in a beautiful way. In 1974, you said that busing policies were well-meaning in theory, but sometimes result in, quote, racial hostility. What else did I say in that? D tell me. No, you got it there. <laughs> read, read, read the whole quote. I don't have the whole quote. The whole quote is the federal government doesn't give a shit about African Americans. Oh, that is true. That's country. why I didn't include it. Sure, sure Jan. Jan. That's definitely why you didn't want to include it because, you know, it was a curse word. Even though Bernie Sanders said the curse word and you didn't censor what he said. There was no bleep. So, you see, this is what the media tries to do. They try to take Bernie Sanders out of context so people will hear what he's saying and interpret his words in a different way than they are intended to be interpreted. I mean, the same thing happens when it comes to raising taxes to pay for Medicare for All. They'll often ask Bernie, do you think that Medicare for All would require you to raise taxes on the middle class? Bernie Sanders gives a thoughtful answer, and he says yes, but they'll be saving money, but they don't actually report the main point. They bury the lead intentionally so people just read the headline and think, oh, Bernie wants to raise my taxes. Fuck Bernie. So they know what they're doing, and Bernie knows what they're doing, and I think he's become savvy enough to call it out. Of course, Bernie Sanders was not in the same league as Joe Biden. While Joe Biden was teaming up with segregationists to do segregation, Bernie Sanders was leading the fight 
to desegregate college campuses. So, I mean, how dare you even try to portray Bernie Sanders in that same light? How despicable. But, I mean, it's it's not surprising. This is the Washington Post, and as you're going to see here, Bernie Sanders did not hesitate to take even more shots at them, Um, and it was amazing. So, what we're going to see now is Bernie Sanders will explain what we can expect if he is the president, because we have this idea of the legislative process you know somebody will propose a policy and then it'll be debated between republicans and democrats and then there'll ultimately be a watered down version of said policy but what bernie sanders is going to do here is explain look my presidency is not going to be a normal presidency we're not going to continue to do politics as usual i'm going to make the case that we are not executing my agenda as president we're executing the agenda of the american people and he has a very specific plan to name and shame people who actually don't want to get on board with policies like Medicare for All. And I loved everything he said here because he alluded to it in the past, but he was very specific here about what that would look like in practice. President Obama had to make concessions on the ACA. Would you be willing to make concessions as president on Medicare for All? Well, I, I think one of the points that I want to make is that Bernie Sanders' presidency would be a different type of presidency. In other words, I hold the radical vision that maybe, just maybe, a president and a Congress should do what the American people want them to do. I know that's a radical idea. It's not ra I th no, no, it's no. in reality. Mitch, oh, Leader McConnell doesn't right, seem to pay a political price. Let me talk right? about reality. He doesn't seem to pay a political right, price for not taking up the House Democrats' right, bills. Let me talk about reality, all right? And again, I, you know, what we are trying to do is something a bit different than other presidents. That's my history politically. And what I believe is that right now you have a Congress that is heavily done, especially the Republican Party. You tell me, maybe the Washington Post might want to do a poll on this, and that is to ask the American people whether they think we should give huge tax breaks to billionaires, greatly expand military spending, and then cut back on Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and education. Now, if you did that poll, how many, what percentage of the American people would think that's a good idea? But that's exactly what Mitch McConnell believes. All right. Way out of touch with the people of Kentucky, with the people of America. What we need is presidential leadership that goes to Kentucky, by the way, a very poor state, and says that, stand up and tell your senators that health care is a human right, that you will save money by moving to a Medicare program. Right now, in my campaign for president, the thing I'm most proud of is that we have over one million volunteers. The reason I believe we're going to win the Democratic nomination and defeat Trump is because of our grassroots movement. And as president, what I will do is expand that movement and create a process where people all over this country become engaged in the political process, working class people, young people in a way that we have never seen before, and put pressure on Republicans, and I will do everything I can to make sure, by the way, that the Republicans do not continue to control the Senate, but put pressure on Republicans and Democrats to move this country forward in a way that reflects the needs of the working class in this country. What does that mean? It means raising the minimum wage to a living wage. It means rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure and creating many millions of decent paying jobs. It means expanding the trade union movement, making it easier for workers to join unions. It means demanding that the wealthiest people in this country start paying their fair share of taxes. So now, I know we're in Jeff Bezos' building, but Amazon last year made over $10 billion of profit. What did they pay in taxes? Not a nickel in federal income taxes. Does anyone think that that is vaguely sane? Okay, first of all, I loved that jab that he took at Jeff Bezos there at the end. Second of all, this right here tells you everything you need to know about the entirety of the Democratic Party primary in 2020. There's one candidate who's truly fighting for you and actually has a plan to get your agenda implemented legislatively. It's Bernie Sanders. He's saying here, I am not fighting from my agenda. My agenda is what the American people want. He says what we need is presidential leadership that goes to Kentucky, Mitch McConnell's state, a very poor state, and says, stand up and tell your senators that health care is a human right. He'd put pressure on Republicans and Democrats to move this country forward in a way that reflects the needs of the working class in this country. Understand what he's saying and why this is so unprecedented. He's saying, I am gearing up to go to war 
with the special interests, with Republicans, with members of my own party if I'm president, because I know that I will be opposed by all types of forces if I'm elected. So what we're going to do is fight tooth and nail, and we know that we're going to have to do this in order to get what we want implemented. I'll campaign in Kentucky if Mitch McConnell is still the Senate Majority Leader. I will go to the districts of Congress members who are in the Democratic Party and tell their constituents why they're siding with the health insurance industry as opposed to them. This is what you have to do. You play politics and you fucking crack skulls. Bernie Sanders is the only person who's explicitly saying, I will not be doing politics as usual. And no, this isn't, you know, the Obama promise of hope and change. We're going to change the way we do politics. He's saying, yes, we're going to change the way we do politics, but here's my plan. This is specifically what I will do to make sure that your agenda is implemented. It's amazing to see somebody say this. I mean, how could you not vote for them? If you plug your ears and ignore Bernie Sanders, then you have no reason to complain because you have a candidate who's willing to do your bidding unequivocally, uncompromisingly. Do you expect any other presidential candidate to go to the home state of a different lawmaker and campaign against them in such a brazen way? I mean, who would do that? He knows to be attacked by the mainstream media. He knows that this would invite, you know, an intraparty warfare, perhaps. Democrats would attack him. The DNC would attack him. They would try to primary him in 2024. But he doesn't care because he knows that there's no other way that you get something like Medicare for All. You don't have a choice. If you genuinely believe that we should have Medicare for All and you know that that's what the American people want, you have no choice. If you're not willing to do this, you're not going to get Medicare for all. So all these other candidates like Elizabeth Warren, she could say, look, I, you know, I support abolishing private insurance, but at the end of the day, who do you want battling for you? Elizabeth Warren, who oftentimes kowtows to the establishment, or Bernie Sanders, who says, I don't give a fuck what they have to say about me. This is such... A fascinating interview. Bernie Sanders truly is one of a kind. Like, I would be surprised if we see another politician like him who's this strategically savvy in our lifetimes. Now, moving on, Bernie Sanders has been accused of being too consistent, and that's apparently a negative. He uh, has the same exact message as he did in 2016. But what's interesting is that there are so many swaggerjacking centrists who are copying his message, they're plagiarizing him. But yet, He's being accused of being a one-trick pony. So he was asked how he distinguishes himself in a primary where there's a lot of fake Bernie Sanders who are running to be Bernie Sanders light. And um, this is his response, which I thought was just great. And there's a real choice, as you outlined today, between Vice President Biden's view of the world and your view of the world. But you have a crowded lane this time. A lot of people echoing your views, yep. stuff you talked about in 2016. How do you persuade voters that they should side with you? It's crowded this time around. I think I would ask people to look at the record. You're beyond right. the record. Beyond well, no, 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 no. That's no. I, I think it is fair to look at the record. I mean, anybody can come up with any position today. They can do a poll. Say, oh boy, I better support Medicare for all. It's popular among Democrats. You think some Democrats have? I, I'm not. The look, 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 I'm not. Well, you can make that determination. All that I'm saying is find out. You know, you talked about other people saying what I'm saying. Four years ago, it was not so easy because I got condemned by the Washington Post and everybody else by talking about raising the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. Talk about Medicare for all single payer system. Talking about making public colleges and universities tuition free and dealing with student debt. Talked about a trillion dollar investment to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure. Talked about criminal justice reform and comprehensive immigration reform. I was there. I did it. Is when being it wasn't first enough this time? No, it's not enough. But it should tell the average voter that I am prepared to lead in a different type of way, that I am prepared to take on the political establishment, to take on the corporate establishment, and stand up for the working class of this country. One, he took another jab at the Washington Post, which I loved, and two, he made a phenomenal point. I mean, you're running to be president because you believe that you have leadership quali qualities that are necessary for that position. So he says, look, I led on these issues. It was politically not expedient for me to be talking about Medicare for all or, you know, it, it was promoted this idea that you shouldn't talk about these policy ideas that are too progressive or too radical. 
But he said, I just ran on what I thought was, you know, the right policies. I led the charge, and now everyone else is following behind me. Nobody talked about Medicare for All. Even people who are deemed progressive. Elizabeth Warren, she didn't talk about Medicare for All until I talked about Medicare for All. Why? Because I'm a leader. They're following me. I'm the one leading on these issues. So do you want diet Bernie Sanders, or do you want the real deal? And that's exactly the point he needs to hammer home. He was the leader while everyone else was too afraid playing politics to talk about these issues that we all have been wanting for decades. I mean, single-payer healthcare is not some new idea. This is what liberals have been wanting, left-wing and progressive people. They've been wanting this for decades. I've always wanted single-payer. So the fact that Bernie is just the only politician who capitalized on this policy... You know, that shows not only that he's politically savvy, but he's also brave because, you know, strategists in D.C. would say, you know, you just can't take a stance on an issue until it polls at above 50 percent. Once it reaches 51 percent, you can endorse it. But, you know, if it's below 50 percent, stay away from that policy. Bernie isn't a focus group driven, poll minded politician. He speaks authentically from the heart. And that's why people like him, because when he says, I'm going to fight for Medicare for all, we can believe him. Because there's no conflict of interest that suggests he's going to, you know, uh, not do what he's saying he's going to do when he gets elected. Because the people who helped get him in power are not the industries who would benefit by killing off a plan like Medicare for All. So again, I will link you to the full interview. It's absolutely phenomenal. I would encourage you to watch the entire thing. Bernie was really at his best here. He was snappy. He was charming. I loved it. Um, we need to share this interview because we need people to see Bernie Sanders, you know, uh, in his best uh, in his best light, right? He, he's phenomenal here, and he explains very clearly how he's going to be fighting for people if he's elected. And people need to see this because they need to see that there's one person in this race who's the real deal. It's Bernie Sanders, and he makes that crystal clear, I think, in this interview. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.